Today we'll make a simple gingerbread house. Keep watching. I'm going to start off by repurposing this little Halloween sign because this is going to be the base of our gingerbread house. Just peel that off and there's a little felt that is left over here so I'm just going to go ahead and take that off. I got this little sign at Dirt Cheap and it originally came from Target. It's going to need a little bit of work before it's ready for our gingerbread house, which is neutral. So I'm going to use this black furniture marker that came in a three pack from Dollar Tree, of course. I do recommend that you use shorter strokes instead of the long strokes so that you don't have any streaking. So this works a little bit better than these long strokes. Still had some streaking in there. You're gonna let that dry. It's pretty quick drying. And then you can add another coat to that and another if you need it. But this purple was pretty vibrant, so I wanted to be sure that I got it all covered up. And it's okay if you get a little bit on the house itself when you're painting or when you're brushing this on because it's going to be covered up by the paper that we're going to put down in just a moment. And you actually can make this a two-sided sign if you would like. Give yourself two opportunities to get it exactly how you like it. All right, then we're going to take the craft paper that comes from the Dollar Tree. Sometimes you can find this by the shipping material and then it could also be with the wrapping paper. You can place it down and just trace it out. When in doubt, when you are cutting these things out, um, when they're papers, you know, because you can sand them off, it's okay to leave them a little bit bigger or to cut them outside of the line. You don't wanna cut them too small so that you have the underneath part or the base of your house showing. You want to be sure that you have enough to cover it and give it a smooth finish because you want this to look as close to, you know, as perfect as you can get it. There's nothing worse than finishing a project and looking back at, it, back at it and thinking, oh my gosh, I should have done this, that, or the other. And then it's too late. So, I'm going to run out of glue here and switch over to my Dollar Tree Jot glue stick. Be sure you get close to the edges so that holds your paper down, especially when you're when you're sanding. I use my wooden ruler to get this nice and straight and flat. You can see the little wrinkle there? That's easy to fix. And just gently push that with that wooden ruler, push it straight out. I've never tried the plastic ruler or the metal ruler for this, so I don't know. It may be just as good, but you know, when you find something that works, you tend to stick to it. So that's what I did got my sanding foam block that came from Dollar Tree and I'm just going around the edges sorry that I'm out of the frame there there you go so you're gonna go down and away from the project and it's gonna take the edges off there also if you've gone around the entire project and colored your because you want to cut the bottom with the pen and you want to go around all the edging when you sand, some of that may come off. That's okay. Just go back over it with your marker, um, being careful not to get that back onto your paper, which is also a benefit of using the pen rather than using a brush because it's so much easier to control. You can use the metallic pen from Dollar Tree that's white. You can use chalk writers. You can use chalk pens or acrylic markers. And I do happen to have a new package of acrylic markers that my husband bought for me from Amazon. I'm very pleased with them. I wanted to try them, so this is a perfect project. You can, for the shingles on the roof, you can use a curved surface like a popsicle stick or a crab stick, the end of the metal ruler from Dollar Tree. For me, I'm just gonna freehand it. 
and I'm just making curves almost like waves that you draw when you're a child the little waves that you draw for water in the ocean that's what you're gonna draw right here and the peak of each one or the high point of each one is going to hit the center of each one above it that's just how I did mine but you can do yours any way that you like Those little dots that I've drawn don't really have any particular purpose. They're just little embellishments, just like the little dots that are on here. If you look on Pinterest or any other, if you Google how to make a gingerbread house, you're going to see a variety of ways that you can do it. I like the curves and I like the dots. So that's what I'm using, but you don't have to do it that way. This is just not to tell you exactly what you need to do. This is to give you a guide and show you what I'm doing. Because this is the first time that I have done a gingerbread house. And, you know, I'm sure as I do more of them, I'll venture out and, and do something a little more maybe complicated or challenging. But right now I'm going to do, you know, it's my first time. I want to be sure that I do the best that I can do, but something that I can be proud of when I'm done. Okay, so you can use an ink stamper, you can use a little box, a square, any type of guide that you want to make your little windows if you want them to be somewhat symmetrical. And so that's what I've done here. And they are not centered on the house, but the, you know, the house is also not symmetrical and that's okay. All right, so I am just going to follow roughly my pencil lines to make some windows. So now I have a door and windows and the roof on my house. Putting some more dots here and to try to space them more evenly, I'm doing the corners, the center, and then splitting the difference. It helps give me a guide too. If I decide I wanna put shutters or anything else on there. I've got a little somewhat of a guide. So you'll see me pausing quite a bit because I'm trying to decide what I want to do before I actually do it. And I did not use a any type of pencil to do the little embellishments. So I'm just trying to do this slowly and go over this slowly. You can use any type of design that you like. These little arches almost look like a mustache, don't they? Okay, so just like piping on a gingerbread cookie, I'm making some little layers here. They don't have to make sense. This is all whimsy. This is whimsical. This is make-believe, pretend, childlike, you know. It's playful. You're supposed to see it and go, oh, how cute. Not, oh, wow, those windows are not even. No, that's not what we do. Not with a gingerbread house. You could certainly do this with your children, with your grandchildren. You could just maybe use the scissors and cut things out for them and then give them the chalk writers or the chalk markers and just let them go crazy. They can use markers and glitter and sequins and you can get all those things at Dollar Tree so you're not spending a lot of money. It's still affordable and you're making that memory that, oh, you just can't replace it. My little girl is crafty. She loves to craft along with me. And this is just, she wasn't there the day that I did this to participate, but I know when she sees it, she's going to want to do one too. And I'm sure my little nephews would probably love doing this as well. You could even use little theme stickers if they like Paw Patrol or if they like superheroes or Strawberry Shortcake or Peppa Pig. If you can find the little, the little stickers, you can always use them. Do whatever you want to on this. You don't have to use white. You can use different colors. 
make it really cheery and bright and colorful. So I feel like I want my lines a little bit thicker. I'm just going to go back over them. You can do that. You don't have to do that. I could have just started off with the thicker tip marker and probably would have been just absolutely fine doing it that way and saved a little bit of of time but honestly this is a good way if you if you're gonna call something a time waster this is a good way to do it I had a lot of fun doing this I used to doodle and draw when I was younger and even on up into high school and part of my adulthood there's just something that goes along with being an adult and you you start seeing the reality of the world and you start being responsible quote unquote and a lot of the things that bring us joy as a child, we just let go of that. And I think Christmas time and just crafting in general is the perfect time for us to try to recapture a little of that joy. So I really encourage you to do this. You don't have to be somebody who prides themselves on the way that they draw. You can see here, this is circles, semicircles, dots, squares. There is nothing special that I'm doing here. You can definitely do this. Google it, go to Pinterest, look on Instagram, watch other videos of YouTubers who do gingerbread themed um, crafts, and just try it. It's so easy to do. And, you know, if you make what you might call a mistake or an error, just add you another layer of paper on top of this and start over. If you're staying at home a lot with this pandemic, this is the perfect time for you to be to be doing this, practicing your skills. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you who have subscribed to my channel. I'm at almost 170 and I have been doing YouTube videos on this channel since I believe August so I'm very happy with that and the best way to show that you appreciate what you see on this channel and what we're doing on this channel is to subscribe it shows your support and when you give a thumbs up or you like my videos it shows YouTube that what I'm doing is worthy of time you know of your time that you thought it was interesting enough to stop and and hang out with me for a little while so I appreciate every like every comment the thumbs up it all means it really means a lot to me so welcome if you're new I have another one of these gingerbread houses coming up really soon with the same form so be sure that you subscribe to watch that. I'll see you again soon. Bye.